Hey everybody, welcome back to HPC Tech Shorts, the engineering water cooler here in AWS. Today, we're going to talk about Yellow Dog, and in fact, we're going to be joined by Alan Parry, who's the Director of Engineering at Yellow Dog, and he's going to talk to us about Yellow Dog Platform, which is their product that they use for uh, workloads, workload management uh, in the cloud. They can do some really, really large-scale workloads. They perfected this art while they were working with uh, media and entertainment companies for, for doing video rendering and you know really large-scale HPC workloads that that industry generates. And then they brought it more generally to a to a wider audience, uh, which is which is how we made contact with them and uh, and started to learn about how cool this thing is. Hey, Alan, welcome to the show. Morning. Good to see you again. Guys, you guys used to make your living out of media and entertainment, you know, doing big workloads and stuff for like, I don't know, presumably rendering houses and CGI affects people. That's right. Yeah. So, so we started out, our journey was uh, we, we, we wanted to help kind of animation houses, uh, you know, visual effects studios, marketing, advertising agencies to, to really get access to huge amounts of compute in the, in the cloud. Um, and we started this kind of quite a few years ago and, and, uh, you know, part of our journey, we recognize that some of the challenges they were facing, you know, huge scale, you know, absolute reliability requirements and, and, and real heavy focus on security was something that we could deliver. Um, and then the challenges we solved in doing that were going to be applicable to kind of loads of other industries as well. So we built this kind of new platform, this horizontal platform to kind of address some of that, bring it all together. Well, it makes a lot of sense. So, so you know, we... Every time we show a an example of a customer doing millions of cores, I should, you know, Dr. Evil style, millions of cores, every time we do one of those where we show that off, um, we get, you know, we get questions from customers, how easy is it? And and on a, the honest to God answer is, you yeah, know, there's some work involved, right? Okay. So show us how this, how this works because you guys have actually made it a lot easier, right? Yeah, we have. And, um, you know, one of the beauties of if, if you can get this right, okay, so, so that this scale can be cost neutral, right? So renting a, a million cores for an hour is the same cost as renting one core for a million hours, but the, the transformation on the business is phenomenal, right? Yeah, is. Um, so what we're showing here, so this is a, this is a run we did with a customer uh, last year who was simulating protein bindings um, at, at huge scale. Um, we pulled together across a number of different regions, lots of different shapes and avail uh, available kind of capacity to put together 3.2 million cores. And, and, and what, I'm, what I'm showing you here is really, you know, this, this workload over the course of about, what, about an hour and 10 minutes here. Um, the black line shows as, as systems become uh, available. So as we provision them, as they register with us, and the, the, yellow, uh, the yellow line, the yellow region underneath that shows their actual working uh, time. So you can see, you know, we've got kind of exceptional utilization here, something like 95% overall. That's awesome uh, utilization. That is extremely clean. And and so you've shut down, you've run this up to 3.2 million cores and you've actually shut them down about an hour and 10 minutes later, right? That's right. Yeah. Um, and you see, so as soon as, soon as the, the, you know, the workloads start to become you know, completed, we start to be exhausted of, of work to be done. We're instantly sort of terminating those instances. So the customer is not being charged for them. Um, what you're not, there's a little bit of kind of detail in here you might just be missing is that in, in places the actual ready nodes are dropping and that's because we're able to utilize spot instances in the cloud as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and because we've been doing this for quite a while, we've really kind of built in a lot of resilience. We can we can tolerate instances being preempted or, or taken away from us, um, and either reprovision those or reallocate that work or retry that work. We've got a lot of kind of rich policy stuff that lets the customer kind of define how, what what makes sense for their workloads. Okay. Uh, so that makes sense. So, uh, what kind of jobs are good for this? Like, is is there is there a, you know what's the uh, what's the prep you have to do with your job? Does it need to be containerized? Does it need to be you know uh, packaged up in a particular way to make it to make it work no i mean you know obviously there's you know those of us that work in this area recognize you know there's lots of different kind of types of workload within hpc you know you've got kind of embarrassing parallelizable workloads and you've got really kind of tightly coupled workloads that often kind of utilize things like mpi for kind of you know yeah. really, really vast storage and all these kind of things um and we can support all of those um this this here is obviously you know this kind of scale and this kind of scale cluster is, is when we're looking kind of multi-cloud and multi-region and, and bursting between on-prem and off-prem you know that does introduce obviously some kind of fundamental constraints and um this is an embarrassing parallelizable workload so each task is kind of discrete and kind of goes and collects the bits of data using our mm -hmm. resources 
framework to kind of pull in those dependencies as they're needed. Um, you know, you, 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 as you start to look at kind of other things that have a reliance on Slurm clusters, which is something that we can we can we can um, deploy as well through Yellow Dog, or you've got kind of MPI requirements, then you know that does introduce constraints, and and, and you can define those requirements whether or not you've got. Um, you want all this compute to be within a single region or a single provider. So right. So that's so that's actually particularly interesting. If you're going to go multi-region or multi-site, right, with your with your workload, you necessarily need to be. You know, there's this constraints. There's constraints on things like that data. You don't want to be moving petabytes of data around uh, for a five minute job. You don't want to be moving a, a ten hour job around if the data is not available. How do you manage that? How do you work around that? So, so yeah, so th th we've got a bunch of things that let you kind of move data around. Obviously, you know, one part of the, the HPC problem is kind of finding the compute and, and moving the applications around, but the other side is getting the data there as well, right? Um, so Ye Yellow Dog lets you define kind of what we call task inputs and outputs within all of the, um, the tasks that you're going to be scheduling through our workload manager. And what will happen then is those tasks get scheduled, then the, they, they'll automatically go and pull off that data from um, wherever it resides and make sure it's available on the node that's running that task. Um, as you move on, we've got some more interesting features coming along that allow you to actually define um, what we call resources and, and make sure that they are available um, to the task at the point that they get scheduled, but also that you won't actually even schedule the task until those resources become available. So that's a really a kind of an optimization to make sure that you don't go off and pull, provide a provision or a bunch of compute, which then just sits there waiting for kind of data. And that could be something like a, a, an ISV license that you've paid for, right? You could have a constraint on licenses in that particular case. Absolutely, yeah. So it could be a license, it could be a piece of data as part of your input, but it actually it could even be the kind of the output from a previous task as well. So it allows you to build these rich kind of pipelines of things, which is um right. you're seeing a lot of kind of yeah. um, all right. So how does how does this look when, when things are actually running, Alan? How do how do people monitor it, manage it, see it in action? Yeah. So workloads are pretty complex, right? You, you've got yeah, potentially millions, billions even of, of tasks that you might be kind of looking to track and understand performance mm -hmm. and, and, and characteristics of. So you can use our platform, you know, our, our portal gives you a really kind of strong view of what's happening in terms of the, what we're looking at here is the the work requirements, so the actual kind of job as it were um, for, for, the, for the, the drug discovery piece I've been describing to you a minute ago. So you can see, you know, all the tasks within this, you can see their status, you can see whether there's been failures, retries, why that's happened. And in terms of kind of understanding, you know, why workloads have problems, because, you know, at scale, there are always, you know, things that arise, which are either issues or failures or, or things which, which we can look to optimize to get the most out of that. And so you can dig in, you could actually dig in to find out that it, it got, it got preempted by a spot market interruption, and yeah. reschedule on a different node three minutes later, et cetera. You can see exactly. all that detail. Exactly. That's all there. And, 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 and you can also even at the very lowest level kind of, you know, this is, this is a, you know, an actual task here. You can see uh, an analysis of a particular protein binding with another one. You can dig through. You could find the output of that. And, you know, if you were a computational chemist that could understand some of those outputs, you could even kind of look in it and see if, if that was making sense and the right, right data was coming through. You can do that right. all for Okay, it's it's one thing to actually be able to orchestrate a billion tasks uh, on three point two million cores. It's quite another thing to be able to actually give people the data so they can understand what's going on as it as it's happening. So this is really cool. Exactly. Just just briefly, I can kind of talk to you over the architecture here. I mean, you know, anyone who's familiar with, with Kubernetes won't be too surprised with this. So our platform's deployed on Kubernetes and, and you know, part of the early motivation for that was so that we could be portable, um, you know, both cross cloud, but also take on premise as well. So we have customers that want to be able to run the actual platform within their infrastructure, but still be able to burst into the cloud as well for kind of, um, you know, high capacity kind of burst workloads. Uh, we don't actually run MPI or, or, or any of our workloads directly inside of Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is is the the platform hosting um, uh, platform, and uh, and we what we do then is, is within that one of the services that we run there is our compute service, which is the is responsible for orchestrating all of the compute that's provisioned and and then ultimately scheduled within the cloud. Um, so the actual workloads themselves run on you know instances, fleet instances uh, within within cloud providers, and Got that it. can be anything in terms of you know native binaries or, or, or docker containers themselves so and so so on aws you're just using actual ec2 fleet calls to actually scoop up lots of or spot fleet calls to scoop up yeah, exactly. and, and, and we can get really good kind of diversity with that as well i'll take you know, show you this i mean this um this corresponds to one of the workloads that i was describing you earlier and if you can see you know we've got kind of you know tens of different fleets going on here of different shapes mm. so we're 
really able to kind of pull in a, a real kind of diverse um, range of, of, of instances if the workload is kind of compatible with that. Got it, got it. And, and in fact, so I'm seeing there you're using fifth generation Intel across the board there. This is mm -hmm. just a case where you've characterized the workload and you've worked out that that's the right CPU for the, for the job, right? Exactly. Yeah, and this is this is a Dockerized um, workload. So you know, if, if you can get that kind of abstraction in there as well, that that can really help with the, the with the diversity of shapes. And you know, this helps in terms of you know when when you, especially when you're running at busy times and you know, you're not sure um, the, the 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 what you're going to get in terms of capacity when you define the work the compute requirements within Yellow Dog. You 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 can create this kind of work. For, uh, waterfall sort of effect where you sort of define what your preferences are in terms of regions and shapes and it'll get the best for you um and, and and mix and match to kind of fill in you know the capacity you're looking for so who's going to be who's really going to be uh wanting to do this sort of stuff i mean we've seen definitely seen the example of uh what you were talking about earlier in media and entertainment and the pharmaceutical companies are going crazy over this kind of capability because i think it's what you said earlier you know what was the number you used? It was something like 12 years worth of work could get done in an hour. I mean, is it literally true that it's that? It really is, yeah. So, so that specific workload I was talking about, the customer we were working with there worked out that, you know, it was going to take them 12 years to do what they wanted to do. Um, and, and we were able to help them kind of go and get the kind of capacity uh, at, at really a similar cost that could do that same workload in, in, in just over an hour. And, you know, if you think about the kind of the transformation that means for the business, if the business is able to kind of think big and they're able to think, you know, what if in terms of what, what problems could I solve? And if we've learned anything from the last couple of years, right, it's, is that there's some big hard problems out there, um, but the good news is, is there are actually solutions as well. And 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 we really firmly believe that HPC and and, and some of the tools that, that, that AWS and Yellow Dog are building are, are can help people kind of really make fast progress on those things. Makes sense. And it's in the AWS marketplace. That's one way of finding it. Of course, there's multiple ways of getting hold of this thing, but I noticed that it's in the marketplace. Um, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's there. So you can come along. You can you can sign up for Yellow Dog, and you can um, you can start provisioning massive massive compute clusters in the cloud and uh, solving those hard problems very quickly. Um, we've we've got some more info. Uh, you know, there's a there's a blog post that kind of covers more detail what we did with that 3.2 million core cluster. Um, and and if you take a look at our website, there's some really other other really useful kind of case studies that talk through some of the API MPI capabilities and our ability to provision Slurm clusters. So you can really just kind of lift and shift your existing workload and um, if you've got that and, and and just take it to scale. Okay, that makes sense. And then of course, you know, once you've got it stood up, you've got yellow dog support for getting help to actually stand things up, make things work. What's the, is there a white glove service for helping somebody go through a mega run experience? There is absolutely. You know, I mean, you know, we're really excited by you know what we can achieve with this, and we want we want people to be successful, and we want more success stories. So we will absolutely kind of jump in and, and help people kind of think through some of the challenges they've got and how they can take that to scale and how they can use Yellow Dog and, and, and AWS services to do that. Uh, with that, I will say thanks for coming along today. If anybody out there has got ideas for future tech shorts that they want to see us do, uh, find us on Twitter and DM us. Our DMs are open. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. Thanks for coming along today. Great talking to you. Boy. See you soon.